Nostalgia Rewind. We're back, episode 14. And today we talked to Angela Saba from San Antonio, Texas. Uh, she discusses her experiences in that region of the Hill Country where Texas is really growing in the wine space. Uh, we talked briefly about our Dallas Mavs versus San Antonio Spurs friendly rivalry. And we talked more about just what she's looking for uh, in her own wine journey. So stay tuned if you're from Texas or love going down to the Hill Country to enjoy wine. I think you'll really enjoy the energy we bring in this episode. Hey everyone, welcome to How's Your Wine? This is episode 14 and I'm here with Angela from San Antonio, Texas, just a little bit south of Dallas, uh, where I'm at. So Angela, go ahead and clear the air. We don't have a, a friend, we don't have a rivalry here, but tell them more about you and uh, what you're doing in San Antonio. Hey, so I'm Angela. I don't know if we don't have a rivalry. I'm a Spurs fan and you're wearing a Mavericks hat. So, you know, <laughs> oh, I know, I know, I, I know. <laughs> uh, no, we connected on Instagram and I was laughing because I'm like, I've watched some of your shows now. Uh, I don't know if anybody got into asking me because uh, they're all very professional. I just love to blog about wine and go to Texas wineries and share kind of what's happening in the Texas Hill Country. So, like I said, not a professional at all. I started my Instagram just trying to, like, keep tasting notes yeah. for myself and what I like. And then following a lot of wine people and really connecting with people on that and from there, it's taken off a little bit, but I just have a really good time going up there. That's my happy place is the the hill country. So, and it's been exploding in the last decade. So it's a really fun time. For sure. So um, you, are you from San Antonio originally? Yes. Yeah, so I was born in Texas to military family. So born in Colleen. Um, I like to say I grew up in Hawaii because that's where my dad was stationed in elementary school. And then we moved to San Antonio, like fourth, fifth grade, went to college at A&M. That was the only time away. My, my goal was I was going to try and move to Chicago after college, but I met my husband um, and we, <laughs> he was not moving from San Antonio when I moved back home for a little bit um, and <laughs> went from there. I stayed here and now I'd love to visit Chicago, but I'm really glad I stayed here because I don't do well in cold weather <laughs> for long periods of time. Yeah. But yeah, so mainly San Antonio and we, our food scene, I don't know how often you get out to San Antonio and when you do, you better look me up and we'll go eat and drink and have a good time. We've become such a foodie town in the last, like in the last decade again, because, you know, we're so close to Austin. Mm -hmm. People can't afford Austin anymore. So now we've got mm -hmm. it all coming down here and, like last Friday, I did a tequila tasting with Chef Johnny, who owns like three or four restaurants here now. And he's pretty incredible. Just, you know, what I love about spirits and real food people is the, the education they put into it, the time and the love and the passion they have for what they do. And I just, I like being around it because it rubs off on you and right. whatever capacity that you do, like it just is infectious to me. So that was really fun. I didn't know a lot about tequila. Do you ever drink tequila? That's my, uh, if I don't drink wine, uh, I dabble in tequila, uh, mezcal, nice. um, mm. just because I think growing up, like I was big into, well, not growing up, but uh, post-college, like I was really into like brown. <laughs> yeah, my, my mom would be pissed if I said I was growing up with uh, <laughs> You're sipping tequila at 10. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they would let me do that in Nigeria, so. Um, no. But uh, no, but after college, it was really big on brown, right? Just because you're going out, you're chilling with the homies. But I think once like COVID hit, I was trying to settle and ease up. So I kind of switched into wine and tequila is like the the only other liquor I would dabble into. Yeah, he's doing a new restaurant where he really wants to bring like tequila sipping, not just margaritas, but actually sipping and enjoying the actual spirit. And so that's what we did. And I had never really sat and sipped on tequila. Um, it's the only tasting I've done where I actually, I, I poured a lot out because there's <laughs> no way we did about 10 tequilas. I would have been on the floor yeah. easily if I hadn't poured some out, I but agree. it was really good. I found some that just surprised me and I, I could sip this easily. So it was fun. That's what's up. So that was one of my main questions I wanted to get to you because being from Dallas, 
I've been to San Antonio uh, recently, I think as of two years ago, I went uh, during the summer. Um, describe like that food culture um, there and then describe like the wine culture. Um, now that you mentioned like Austin is getting so high, San Antonio is mm-hmm. really close to Austin. So tell the people more about that. Man, oh, I mean, we've now been listed on several like top lists in the country to come eat. And that's that's true. I mean, it's such a wide variety. We're more than tacos. I mean, we've got some amazing Thai restaurants that I absolutely adore. Like Tong's Thai has been around for years. Some really good sushi places. Uh, just anything you can think of. We're, I feel like we're lacking in the German, but I guess if you just go up north to New Broncos a little bit, you'll find all the really good German food. Uh, but it's just a big melting pot of what you can find in San Antonio now. And really, really thoughtful menus and designs. Um, one of my favorite places is Maverick. And it's not like they're going to have 10 million things. They're not the Cheesecake Factory. But, you know, they've got like seven to eight really great dishes. And then they have a really small but mighty wine list. Like you can tell they've really taken the time of what's going to pair well with these meals and then at all different price points too, which is nice. So the food scene here is great. Stay, I mean, Riverwalk is fun. Stay off of it though. Like if you're going to come here, do Southtown, do the Pearl. Um, those are two great areas to be at. Sometimes if you're far West, like in the Sea World area, Dominion has some really good restaurants, but the Pearl and Southtown is kind of where everybody's really making their name. Um, as far as food and then wine, it's, it's not as prevalent, but it's getting there. So, yeah, I mean, that's the fun thing. There's some great, great little wine bars. Like there's one called little death here on St. Mary's and St. Mary's is really like the punk rock area of the town. You have all your music there. Have you ever done St. Mary's strip? I have. It's it's fun. It sounds (laughs) like I need to add it to the list. You, you do. It's where you get a little crazy. They've got all the like bars there, a lot of dance clubs, like 80s dance club Brass Monkey is there. That's one of my favorite places, although I haven't been in a while because pandemic. Um, but they have Little Death there. And Little Death is very funky. It's you walk in and it's tiny. It's more of an outdoor place, which we can have in San Antonio. We have pretty good weather if, as long as you like the heat, right? right. Uh, but they really specialize in French natural wines. So you get a lot of French wines at Little Death. And then at um, the Pearl, we have your High Street Wine Bar, which has a great, they have great wine flights, rotates. Um, I always suggest like do High Street and then get reservations at Jazz Texas because they have great jazz bands that play there. And it's a really nice atmosphere. It's a great date night. Okay. Um, and then there's a new one. There's this little like artisans alley, which is kind of in the Northeast North central area of towns. It's more like boutique shopping, but they just opened vintage wine bar, which is really good. I had a great Tempranillo tasting there, um, with just little bites of food with it. And I just discovered, I haven't been yet, but there's a new place called Winer, Texas, and they do like the, the taps where you can self pour your wine on the tap and they rotate all Texas wines. Okay. So I've got to make it out to them. So we're starting to get there. It's getting yeah. there. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can still find like go to Scoozies on a Tuesday night and get half price bottles of their wine. So that's always fun too. That's a win. I'll go that's and get, win. yeah, <laughs> that's what I'll go. And I'm like, I'll go get the Orange Swift wines on a Tuesday night at Scoozies and, you know, decor all that or decoy, all that fun stuff for a half off, which is what I would pay if I would just go buy it. But it's something special when you're having a meal out with friends and family. So yeah, it's a good scene. You need to get out here again. I know, Two years I is know. too long. It does sound like it's too long, but um, I think last year, I don't remember what I was doing in the summer. I think I went to, I went to uh, Czech Republic. So my time was, oh. my time was a little spent over in Europe, but when it comes to Texas wines, you mentioned, um, I think I saw on your Instagram, you actually had a Texas wine tour uh, recently. Describe mm-hmm. to us, or especially the people who aren't from Texas, like how that experience was for you as a native Texan. Yeah, okay. So Texas wine country, I just think is a really, to me, like I said, it's my happy place. It's the 290 wine trail. Um, and I've done some California, not as much as I would love, but 
I find it just in Texas wine country. It's a lot more laid back everywhere you go. There's some kind of live music. Um, a lot of it's family friendly, which when you have two boys, I kind of appreciate that because they have so much land. Um, some are not. So if you're big on like, I don't want to be around any kids, you might want to look, <laughs> look at where you're going, <laughs> but honestly, they're so big. They have so much land half the time. You wouldn't even notice. Um, and then a lot are dog friendly. Like they're just fun, laid back places. They're not pretentious. You can walk in and most of the time you're just getting a really good expert who just wants to share what they love. And I meet a lot of young people getting into the wine industry and in the tasting rooms. And it's really, uh, I find it encouraging because all you ever read about is how like this generation doesn't like to drink wine. Well, that's not really true. <laughs> yes, we do. We're there. Well, I'm not even that generation. I'm old. So <laughs> I um, but with the 290 wine trail, you have so many options. So this last weekend I went and I hit three new wineries and one I joined, I joined mm -hmm. Safari. Have you heard of Safari wine Have winery? Safari wines, uh -huh. So they're different. They don't make their wines there. They actually work with winemakers in South Africa, Argentina, and Chile, which are three regions I adore. I especially love South African wines right now, but they're hard to find. Like you don't have huge selections here, which is disappointing. But when you find them, you're like, oh, these are so good. So I joined Safari because they also partner with like the Victoria Wildlife Fund. So Victoria Falls Wildlife Fund. So when, you know, you drink, you feel good about yourself too. Um, but it's really fun to find great wines there from different areas. No, sorry, it's my child. I edit that. I told him, don't come out. For 30 hey, minutes. Give me 30 minutes. This is this is the part where I was sipping tequila at 10, probably. <laughs> exactly. Um, then I did we did Alexander Vineyards, which was good. They do like old world wine. So they also are more like Italian and French and German wines, is what they had on okay. their tasting menu. Then we did Texas Wine Collective, which Texas Wine Collective is three different wineries. You have Brennan, you have Lost Oak, and McPherson, McPherson Wines. And they're all like closer to your area, Dallas, Fort Worth, even Lubbock. Um, and I'm in San Antonio. I'm not driving six hours to go to a winery unless I'm getting a whole day on like Grapevine area, which yep. is so much fun. Yeah. yeah, I bet you're there all the time. Uh, <laughs> I would I'm be there. Today. I'm there enough. Quite a bit, yeah. <laughs> enough. Um, and so it's nice that they kind of came up together and created this space so they could introduce like people around San Antonio, Fredericksburg area to their wines. One of my favorites, so that's new to the 290 wine trail is this couple from Paso Robles in California. And I apologize. I probably am mispronouncing that. I'm a Texan, you know, I have my own accent. <laughs> um, they're really cool though. If you haven't been to Serrano, that's what I'm drinking right now. I always like to talk about them. This is their Knox wine. Um, but they're young. They're also, I think I would assume in their twenties, I haven't asked, but I was thinking late twenties, maybe Sarah and Bryce, and she's the main winemaker. Um, but her family was in wine in California and that's how she got him into it. Like they worked a winery one summer, got him into it. They started making their own wines. Um, and then during the pandemic, they wanted to open where they can like actually grow their own grapes and not just have to buy them and then make it. So they found wine off the 290 trail in, in uh, high Texas. Um, and they just do really cool different mixes. Like they have a new, I haven't tried it yet. I'm really curious. It's an orange muscat bubbles that's dry. So I think that's it's going to be really good. Yeah. Well, they, and that's what I love. Like, and that's the other thing about Texas wine is there's not a lot of rules here. Everyone's like, break the rules in Texas. You know, we're, we're the wild. Like we don't want your rules. We just got like ABA designations a few years ago where you have to have X amount of actual Texas grapes to say it's a Texas wine. So, you know, we have that rule, but other than that, it's kind of do what you want to do. Let's see what happens. Um, so I love that our one, our land is more affordable. So we're getting a lot more winemakers yeah. coming here and just like learning what grapes, but you're going to find a lot of like Montepulciano off the, the, that that's a grape that grows great here. Sancho Basi grows great. Right now. God, I love Montepulciano. It's so good. Yeah, Serrano. Oh, which one is that? This is called uh, Montepulo Puli. Nice. It's got, it's got that total wine. Really, really nice. I love total wine. 
the that Serrano's that was their first release for Texas wine was the Montepulciano. It's so good. I bought the bottle. I well, I, I'm a member too, but I bought a bottle last time I went tasting there, and within a week I had already drank it. Like I did not waste <laughs> time drinking that right Montepulciano. To right to it but that's i mean that's texas wine you're gonna find really fun people you're gonna have a lot of land you're gonna find events um good wine you know it's interesting you find the debate of oh texas wine isn't very good i think if you came a decade ago you could say that it's changed now um no we're not napa um but that's okay that's what I love about wine. Everyone should have different tastes. I mean, that's what's so fun about wine. Like the, you can grow the same grape and it's going to taste so different depending on the soil, depending on what the winemaker chooses to do, depending on the temperature, like talk about diversity. That, that's all wine is. Yeah. Every <laughs> that's year what's be so much fun. Right? Exactly. You know, it's so like cool. Nixon's so used to like having dry summers, but you know, one summer might be a little bit more cooler than another summer mm -hmm. so it's just again you get a different variety with whatever you're trying yeah so fun i love it i love it have you had pet nets i have not uh, a lot of people have <gasps> encouraged me to try it uh, i have not tried it yet oh wait that's the orange natural one no it? it's not the it's not the orange it's like um pet nets is like the natural champagne i mean you can't call it champagne obviously but it's like the natural bubbles it's usually has the screw top um and they don't go through all the processes that like the traditional champagne way would so um sandy Rhodes out on 290 really good has a great pet net um and they're also like the whole family owned i mean they do everything by hand like it's it's pretty incredible what they do but their pet net is what got me into it. Um, you just have to be really careful because it's like living in the bottle. It's still fermenting. So sometimes you'll open it and it will <laughs> kind of explode on you. Always open it over a sink. And then sometimes you're like, oh, this was an easy open. <laughs> but to me, it's like mimosa in a glass. So I'm all no cal less calories is just the bubbles. I don't have to add any juice. It's brunch to me. I love a pet nap. Interesting. So, okay. I was gonna ask a question about a varietal. Um, especially interesting coming from San Antonio. If you could describe yourself as a wine varietal, what varietal would that oh, be? God. Oh, that's I'm not that deep. Um <laughs> let's see what I think what I like. Um maybe if maybe if I was a wine, it's not a varietal. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get on me on any day. Yeah. <laughs> um I think like I think maybe a nebbiolo. Mm. you know it's rich it's layered you just kind of it's real uh it's got a lot of depth to it maybe that's what i think of myself you're like a, are you a barolo <laughs> yeah okay i'm like i'm like the royalty in my gotcha. house as you can tell i can't even get them to stay in a room for 30 <laughs> minutes so mm. i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah i want to be a nebbiolo <laughs> That's actually, but I'm probably, yeah, I'm probably more of like a crowd pleaser grape, like a Chianti. Like, I'm, I can be such a chameleon, like everyone, you know, I try and please a lot. That's a good answer. is why I'm a recruiter, yeah. <laughs> so. so when you're not uh, drinking wine, uh, mm -hmm. which you got a, a big glass of, what are you drinking right now? You got a big glass of that's, that's the, this is that Serrano okay. Knox. And it's a blend of Petite Syrah, Petite Verdot, Merlot, and Cab. Okay. So it's really good. I call it my sexy lady wine. There you go. That's what there I say go. it is. I'm going to have to get a <laughs> bottle of that for, my, for myself. Um, <laughs> yes. So when you're not drinking wine, uh, what what is your like normal day like look like? What's the vibe like? Uh, that's probably why I, I got into wine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a recruiter for med devices and I work with field salespeople, which I love. Like I love the connection. And once again, that goes back to why I love going to wineries. I love talking mm -hmm. to people. I love Instagram and just connecting with people and learning about what they like. Um, but yeah, I'm a recruiter in my normal day to day. So talking to a lot of people, a lot of problem solving, um, you know, trying to figure out the best strategies and being creative uh, I just got my master's degree 
Congrats. Hey, thank you. Well, I say just, but I think it was almost like two years ago now I completed. It doesn't feel like it. Maybe at least a year ago, but I got it in um, change management and I did my capstone on diversity and leadership. Okay. Because that's what, you know, for me, that's a really hard area um, because a lot of leadership, mm-hmm. when you look at promotions, are all internal. And so you kind of have to start people coming into the industry you know, right at the first level. And then it takes years and years and years to get to that leadership level. So how do you diversify the leadership that you need now? Because I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of we need diversity of thought in any business. That's what brings innovation. Um, that's what brings the passion and the just better decisions and newer things to the table when you work with a diverse team. Um, and so it's one reason, like I, I'm not in Roots Fund, but I follow Roots Fund. And I even emailed them one time. I was like, hey, if you ever need a recruiter, like someone who likes to connect people, I had her back. So <laughs> probably like, we don't need recruiters. Hey, uh, I oh, know. No. I think it's good to have connections. So yeah. I can definitely try and, you know, reach out and see how, you know. Yeah. I would love to like just volunteer and say, you know, if, if it needs to be looking at resumes or working on interviewing and role playing and things yeah. along that nature, that's something I would love to volunteer my time and get involved with because mm-hmm. it's what I do all the time at work. Um, and it, I, I do love it, but uh, yeah, that's why I get into wine too. <laughs> it's what kind of brings it down. Okay. And then the rest of the day is family, it's all family. Um, so do you like have most of your family in like San Antonio and still like the clean area or where is most people? Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's, that's kind of San Antonio in a nutshell. Nobody leaves because their family is here. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, we thought if we were going to move anywhere, we thought Denver, like Colorado area, um, we have a little bit of family there, but it does make it easier when you have family around you. Just having that support is a lot nicer uh, when, when you know, inevitably as hits the fan, you know, life happens and it's nice to have your family there to, to help you out. But, you know, we travel a lot. Um, so like this spring break, we're going to Kansas City, which I've never been to. Have you ever been to Kansas City? I have not, but I know they have a really great barbecue, so... That's what I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, and we're Texans. Get a couple bottles of wine, <laughs> pair it with the barbecue. Got to look up the pair. I can't wait. Yeah. Oh, I already found there's like a whole restaurant. All they do is champagne and bubbles. And I'm a big champagne drinker. I, I do not subscribe to it's for celebrations. I'm like any day is a good day for yeah. bubbles. Like always celebrate life then every day. Nice. Um, if you can, you know, health wise, you got to watch it a little bit. <laughs> Everything in moderation, right? Exactly. Um, yeah, so I already told my husband, I was like, you're going to have to take the kids for like a couple of hours, someplace, game room, something, because I want to check out this champagne place. And I'll do it by myself. I don't care. <laughs> like, I'm not afraid yeah. to be alone. That should be a cool experience. Like just going out there, chilling, enjoying some champagne and barbecue. Like, mm-hmm. sounds like a good weekend to me. It pairs with everything, too. That's what's great about champagne. It pairs with everything. I love it with you know, pizza, chicken, fancy meals. Wing. It's really good with Thai food. So you got to cut that spice a little bit with the, with the bubbles. Yeah. So one question I wanted to ask you to piggyback off your recruiting career and like being in the diversity and um, you know, inclusion space. What's one mm-hmm. thing that you would want to see out of the wine industry um, when it comes to, you know, diversity and inclusion and all of that? Oh, I think in the wine industry and it's, I've seen it really, and maybe it's the people I follow. I mean, I've seen it really getting there where we, we have to stop being snobby about wine um, and where it comes from and who's making it. I mean, you're always going to have your power players. You're always going to have your power regions, but just to be more open and try things and not always see it as a competition like it was interesting i just was reading a post from someone i follow who you know they were talking about some of the texas wines beating the competition in san francisco and how do people feel like that it just reminded me of like the judgment in paris (laughs) everyone's trying to one-up each other yeah i mean we just have to there's 
there's enough people drinking wine that we can all celebrate each other. You know, it's interesting. I see like African American, like they're that culture is so good about lifting each other up and celebrating everyone's successes. And I work a lot with, we have employee resource groups where I work and one is like the Hispanic Latino, which is me. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're getting there, but I'm always like, we need to do better about lifting each other up and advocating for ourselves and saying, Hey, these are the accomplishments we've had. Right. Um, and we probably need to do that more in the wine industry too. Like I always see it with like, Trill wine is really good. If you follow her, I like she's so motivating to me because she is not afraid to say her accomplishments and good for her. She shouldn't be. And then I think she also pays it forward for other people. Um, but just that, just like shout it out that we're doing really good or we're making waves and it's okay to try new things. And you know, I don't want I don't want people from different backgrounds coming in and then being like, I do everything the Italian way or the French way or the way they do it in Cal. That's not the point of diversity. The point is you bring in and you bring in what you bring in and do something different with it. Like that's the point of it is that's what makes it fun and interesting. I don't want, I don't want another French wine. I mean, I love it. I'll drink it, but I want to see what you bring to the table um, and all this diversity that's coming up and coming out, which is great. So what, that's what's needed to propel the next generation, right? I mean, we can't be stagnant. Um, and like tomorrow, I don't know if you know, there's like Latinas Wine Club. They do a really good job. So tomorrow I'm on a Zoom class with them to learn about Greek wines, uh, which should be really fun. I don't know very much about Greek wine at all. I bought something from Total Wine today. <laughs> I've never tried it. It said it was like cinnamon and cloves. I was like, this sounds good. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. So, I mean, it's getting there. You just have to find it. You got to follow follow good people. Um, because we connected, I've actually started following a lot of people you follow. And then I was watching some of your YouTube channel and I was like, well, I want to follow this person. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it happens. I mean, we just have to lift each other up all the time. I, first of all, I say that your answer that you gave about diversity was like unbelievable just because... Um, when I first, like, kind of similar to you, like, I, I got interested in wine during COVID, and I was trying to find people that looked like me that I could connect with. Um, and I guess people that didn't look like me, it was just kind of weird, like, how they were pushing, like, wine to stuff that I've already heard, um, mm-hmm. through, like, my work experience and stuff like that. So um, by sticking with it and following people that did look like me or were different, like, I saw how much energy they brought to the table and the passion that they brought. Um, I love how you, you know, have that similar passion and energy about just really loving wine and wanting to share what you are comfortable with, um, but also challenging yourself with learning more about other people. So I think it's really dope. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at your background from Nigeria. I mean, how I, that is not a background I'm very familiar with. I don't have like a friend circle with, I mean, that's what I mean. That's why you have to connect and learn. You know, we don't have to agree on everything. Right. Um, but you got to have an open mind and start learning from each other. I, I'm going to be following your journey because I'm really interested in seeing what you do. And I hope like you take it and you do new things. I mean, we'll see how that car sales <laughs> background <laughs> I mean, comes into play. You probably learned some things though. Yeah, I think from that experience, I learned how to talk to people in the luxury space. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And with wine, you know, wine is essentially a luxury because you don't have to drink wine, right? You can drink tequila, beer, water. Uh, but with yeah. wine, it's just like something that is affiliated with that luxury mindset and culture. But being able to tailor it to, you know, an everyday drink or something that's super chill is a challenge that a lot of people haven't been able to tap into, I believe. Well, and I wonder too, with more diversity, can we tap into that? Because it is associated in our heads with that luxury. Mm-hmm. And that picture probably includes certain colors, certain people, right? I mean, let's be honest. If you're going to have the conversation, you have to be have an open conversation. Right. So if more people of every color, of every background are drinking it, it's going to change that perspective. You know, I can, I can buy a six pack of beer. I can buy a bottle of wine. I mean, they're kind of... If you get out of like the grocery store, you go to Total Wine, you can find really great Italian wines for $10 a bottle. Um, You know, you don't have to spend 
50 bucks every time you want some wine. It seems lately I have been. I'll be honest. I'm a little expensive. I, I have two full wine fridges that I'm like, this is ridiculous. I've got to stop. You got to stock up. I, I, yeah. You never know. Hopefully there's not another pandemic, but I'm going to be yeah. ready this time. You're going to have all the vintages. I'm stopped. You have all the vintages. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's what diversity is going to do, though. It's going to bring in more people drinking it, enjoying it, loving it. It doesn't have to be this bougie thing that's so inaccessible to people. Like, um, I hate when I go to a friend's house because they know me now as like the wino. Um, and I literally have one friend every time she apologizes to I, she's like she literally apologizes to me because she loves Moscato. And I'm like, would you please stop apologizing for your yeah, tastes? Like, just drink what you want to drink. Yes, we all have different tastes. I mean, there's incredible winemakers making Moscatos, making these sweet wines. They're not what I like, but I also drink my coffee black. I don't put any sugar in that. I drink my tea unsweetened. Like, I just don't like very sweet things. So it's not because I think that wine is bad or not worthy of my time. Yeah. I just don't like sweet in general. Um, so... I think that will happen too with more diversity is people need to stop apologizing for what they like. You like what you like, or you go to a tasting. Like my husband at tequila tasting, he was like, I'm horrible at this. I don't, I don't have the palate you have. I said, one, I don't drink tequila like this. I might have a great margarita, but I don't sip tequila. So I don't have a palate for tequila. But if you just say what you taste and smell, that's what they're looking for because the chef has done agave classes. He knows his tequila. He's He wants your perspective as someone who doesn't know anything about tequila because how else is he going to bring in customers who don't drink tequila if he's only putting what he likes on the menu because he probably likes the harder stuff that's, you know, not necessarily the crowd pleaser. You know, like when you get to the really heavy punch in the mouth wines, because you've been drinking it for a while and now you're like, oh, I can really take this tannin. I can really take that coat, the whole mouth and, yeah. um, you know, dry the entire thing out, which I like. That's not the crowd pleaser, though, for the people coming in. So you got to have all levels. You got to have people not afraid to say, you know, this smells like grapes to me. Because you only have the people over here smelling like I smell moss in the grassy forest and oh, yeah. limestone. Like I'm, I don't know what a wet stone smells like. Like yeah, what I'm are you talking like that, about? Yeah. Wet stone on <laughs> yeah. the sidewalk. That's all I can give you. Exactly. Just tell me you like it or you don't like it. Would you drink this again? But that's yeah. all what diversity brings. That's what's so great about it. So we just need to be accepting of it. Otherwise, the industry will die out. America's changing. You know, are, everything is changing. So if you don't accept that, if you're not going to take those different perspectives and tastes, you're not going to last. That's just reality. Preach. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have just a little bit of time left. I know. Um, yeah. the kids, I talk I a lot. No, I just I'm a recruiter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sold. You got me. I'm, 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 I'm signing up. But uh, with your um next steps like what are you looking forward to and um, where can people follow you at on instagram yeah i mean you can follow me at vino san antonio um my next steps you will find me drinking more on the texas wine <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to find me you can probably easily do it um you know, if you connect me with some people from Roots Fund, like I said, that's something I would be really interested in doing. It doesn't have to be like a paid position, but somewhere where I can make a difference with my expertise. Um, and what's great about that is then I learn from all the people at Roots Fund and yeah. what they their expertise. So I'd love to do that. Um, you know, I'm I'm wanting to get more with like Latina's Wine Club um, and really push that with the Latina winemakers because. That's probably a very small group. Um, but yeah, you can find me just tasting wine and sharing what I love and then following other people and making lots of comments and save I save a lot of pictures of I'm I want to try that. Uh, but that's where you can find me and that's kind of the next steps. I don't I don't know if you're ever gonna see me like taking on a full-time wine role. I think that would be when I retire, I want to be a tasting room person. Um and though I'm old, that's hopefully at least like 
let's say at least 20 years down the road. <laughs> That's what I'll be doing. My, my sons did say that they're going to start a winery for me. They See? did say that. Ah, I'm all for it. <laughs> That's what's up. See, it's more of yeah. boys. Yeah. I'm like you all do all the hard work. Yeah. And I'll just drink the benefits of it. Like, you do the hard work, I'll drink. Good. But yeah, Sorry. that's that's Sorry. it. Vino San Antonio. Shout out to your sons. Again, follow her at Vino San Antonio. Um, just really a, a awesome conversation I had with you. I remember when I DM'd you about trying to uh join on this show. You were like, I don't think I, I want to, but I really feel like this conversation speaks to so many other people um, from all backgrounds, you know, who are just getting into wine or just like really building their wine journey. So thanks for reconsidering and uh, joining the show. Thank you. And I'll, I'll keep following you. I want to see what you do. Okay. Yeah, don't, don't unfollow me. I'm going to post your, your clips. <laughs> I'm not unfollowing you. And seriously, when you come to San Antonio, look me up. Um, yeah. We'll go have a glass somewhere. I'll take you to some really good food places and some really good wine. Okay.